Hey guys, I had so much fun doing this interview. I got to talk to Anastasia. It was so much fun chatting about her photography career, how she got into photography, how she's been tapping into her creativity lately, how she filters out clients, and how she's been able to build and make photography her full-time job. So I hope you guys enjoy watching. <laughs> awesome. So thank you so much. Oh, I'm gonna butcher your <laughs> I was like, oh, wait. Oh my gosh. Okay. So thank you so much, Anastasia, for joining me today. I'm really looking forward to getting to know you and hearing about your story. Tell me about what your journeys look like so far. All right. So I've always known I wanted to be a photographer. I don't really know like exactly what that stemmed from, but like as a child, I was like, I'm gonna grow up and be a photographer. Um, and then like all the little like journals that your teachers would make you do that's like, what do you wanna be when you grow up? Mine was like, I'm gonna be a photographer. Um, so like, I've always been obsessed with cameras and photography as a whole. I would like make my siblings model for me. And <laughs> um, I had just like this tiny little like point and shoot camera that my mom gave me, but it basically um, never left my side. Um, and then the older I got, the more like serious I got about it. So senior year of high school, we had to do a senior project and um, which is just like an internship. Um, and so naturally like, I'm like, well, I'm gonna do photography. Like other, other classmates just chose like something random, but I'm like <laughs> so serious about it. So I did my first internship um, and my boss who I ended up working with her for like years, but Kathy, she was like, um, if you want to be a professional photographer, you need to learn how to run a business. So like you need to be a businesswoman first and then a, a photographer second. And at like age 17, I was like, that sounds boring. You know, I was just like, I don't know. Like, I just want to take pictures. She's like, yeah, you can't just take pictures. You have to learn how to run a business. So um, basically, basically from that point on, I took classes in photography. I took classes in marketing and branding. Um, I worked in a marketing office job for like three years while doing photography on the side. <laughs> I just kind of like did everything to like make myself most prepared. <laughs> and then about five years ago, I went full time. So I was like 21 years old and I went full time and um, opened the business fully and quit all my other jobs. Like I quit my marketing office job um, and I just went out into the world. And I was like, all right, well, here goes. <laughs> Hopefully it works out. And then, um, yeah, it worked out. So <laughs> that's what my journey has looked like. It's always been. Um, the same road. I just had to do a lot of little twisties and turns to get there. And what's your favorite part of photography? Um, so I really love to work with people. So I definitely enjoy the people aspect of it. Like I love to photograph people most. Um, and then I guess I would say just like the creative process as a whole. Like I love being able to like express myself without any limitations. You know what I mean? Like like there's no rules to it. Like you just get to do exactly what you want to do. And when I get like an idea in my head and I get to make it come through, that's like the most rewarding feeling. So probably a combination of creative freedom, but also getting to work with people and like giving them something really special that they can hold on to. Um, so that's always rewarding as well to see people like have these, these special memories and these special moments like frozen in time and they can have those like the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. And do you mainly shoot weddings? Do you shoot personal photographs? What's your, what type? Um, so I definitely mostly photograph weddings. Um, that's what keeps me most busy. I used to do a little bit of everything. Like I photographed families and babies and the whole bit, but it just got to be overwhelming. And I was like, I can't do it all. Like my brain is going everywhere. So I do weddings and elopements most, um, most of the time. And then I also do boudoir. So I love to work with like women um, and I love to see like their confidence boosted and I love to kind of show them to look at their bodies through like a more positive light. So I do, uh, yeah, so I do boudoir and I do weddings mostly. And then I'll do like some fun stuff on the side, like branding photos for other business owners. But those two are what keep me most busy. And do you like have a team with you when you photograph weddings? How do you do that? Yeah, so I have a, um, a second shooter. So she's like my assistant. Um, and we work really well together. It's fun. Um, sometimes it's nice because I, if like I'm working with the bride and groom, I could be like, hey, just go like grab random photos of the bridal party being like chaotic like they are. <laughs> and um, so it's fun because like it's like a little surprise for the bride and groom as well because they're, they're not seeing that. They're not seeing the behind the scenes because they're working with me. So um, it's always 
fun to just see like the the randomness that also gets added to like their photo gallery and that's also just really helpful to have like a second set of hands and eyes and do you do you more candid shots do you do poses how do you what's your style like uh, my style is very, very in the moment. So I wouldn't quite call it candid because there, there is um, guidance and direction, but it's not quite posed either. So I, I would say I do like a combination of both. Like sometimes I will pose them and be like, stand this way, turn your head that way, yada, yada. And then sometimes I just like give prompts to get them to be like, to do a certain act. And then in that moment, I'm able to get the best photos, if that makes sense. So I... For example, I will be like, walk towards me and like tug on each other's arms back and forth, back and forth. So they're not exactly posing, but they're doing an act. And then I just know how to photograph it to get, to make it look very, um, almost candid, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But very in the moment, like very, very, um, the most like authentic way that someone is like feeling and acting in that moment is what I would say. Mm -hmm. And what are your tips for being more comfortable in front of a camera? Um, so the number one thing that I like recommend to people is to just move. Because any time that you're like sitting still and, you, and you're just stagnant and you realize that there's a camera on you, you start to feel awkward and then you start to do awkward things. So you're going to like make an unauthentic smile. You're going to do something weird with your hands. Like anytime I'm in photos, because... I obviously like, I can tell people what to do, but I can't do it. Like I'll notice I like do this weird thing with my hands. <laughs> um, so anytime that you're just standing still, um, you get more awkward and then you show through, uh, your awkwardness shows through in the photos. So I always recommend people to move. Like even if you're doing like personal photos for your Instagram to like promote your podcast or your business, like set the timer on or set a video on and just move around, like do a spin, twirl your dress, play with your hair, just keep your body moving and you'll be way more comfortable. Do you have any tips for like taking photos at home? I know everyone's like at home right now. Is there any like tips yeah. to make it look professional at home? Um, lighting is everything. So for starters, like find the best light in your house. Typically I always tell people window light, any artificial light isn't going to photograph is great. Um, especially like if you're not a professional photographer and you don't know how to manipulate it. Um, so window light is everything. Find good window light, no matter what. And then sometimes less is more, um, just like a simple wall can go a long way versus like a bunch of clutter, if that makes sense. But for, for the most part, like find the window light and like I'm trying to like show you an example so like I'm in my room and the window lights like right in front of me so like this is pretty decent light but if I was like all the way over there you know you wouldn't be able to see my face my eyes would look dark so really just find good windows <laughs> <laughs> awesome and for editing do you have presets that you like to use do you have a certain style of editing yeah I've kind of made my own um presets so I've just learned like the style I like, which is very warm. Um, I'm definitely more on the warm side of things. Um, so I've like created these presets and I'm just able to apply them to all my all my work that I'm working on. And then I just have to make little tweaks because if it's like a gloomy day, I might need to warm it up a little bit. If I'm like in a very warm location, I might have to cool it down a little bit. But yeah, I've just made my own and then I just tweak them a little bit um, according to whatever I'm photographing. And what was your process like going from working a full-time job to doing photography full-time? Did you build up a clientele along the way or did you jump right in? So it's kind of tricky because I did build up a clientele along the way. Um, I had been doing like photography on the side for a couple years. So um, I was doing like weddings on the weekends and I would do like family shoots like during the week, like once I got out of my nine to five, but <laughs> what I did was I didn't go full time until like I up and moved to South Carolina. So it's like kind of weird because it's like I did build up the experience and essentially the clientele back home, but I moved elsewhere. So I had to like come, I like went in completely foreign. Like I had no clients there, no connections, no friends. Um, <laughs> so then I had to like completely rebuild a clientele there. Um, so it's a little bit of both because at home I still had a clientele and I could come home and do weddings. And when I did move back home, it was really nice because I had this great support system. But in South Carolina, when I initially opened the business, I didn't have anything. <laughs> and how do you find your clients? 
Uh, networking is a beautiful thing. I tell everybody like networking is so wonderful and it's one of those things that it like comes back to reward you. You might not see the benefits right away. Like you're going to be like, oh, I've, nothing has come from that. But I've like had people reach out like a year later and be like, hey, so my sister-in-law, da, 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 um, from someone I met like one time a year before that. Um, so networking is wonderful. I do a ton of social media marketing. I'm obsessed with Instagram and Facebook. Um, and then referrals, lots of referrals. If you do a good job, people will, um, they will help you out. And do you use Instagram and Facebook ads? I don't. <laughs> I need to though. <laughs> so like now that I'm like doing art a lot and I'm selling my paintings, I'm like, oh crap, I need to start doing ads. And I'm a little bit uneducated. <laughs> I was at, it's funny you asked that because like right before this Zoom call, I um I was like joining a Facebook group that was like Facebook ads for wedding photographers because <laughs> I'm like very uneducated. I need to learn. Do you know who um, Jenna Kutcher is? Yes. Yeah, I love seeing her photography and listening to her podcast. Yeah, she's got a good one. I, I like listen to it from like day one though and now I'm like all caught up and like now she's kind of like repeating topics because she's been around for a little bit and she can do that because she has like a new audience now but I'm like I already listened to this one yeah. <laughs> so now I like need to find my like Jenna Kutcher point two like I need another one that's as good as hers because I was obsessed yeah. and what tips would you give to someone who wants to do photography full-time I guess it would be the same tip my original boss gave me and it's that to really really learn okay I have a couple but <laughs> to really really learn how to run a business and to market yourself um because like like she was saying I mean I could take the best photos in the world but if I don't know how to get clients to book me or if I don't know how to manage a business and to make income off of it I can't be full-time um so on a business side of things like really really learn like information is out there and it's honestly it's free like I learned so much more off of podcasts and like YouTube videos and stuff than I ever did in college, to be honest. <laughs> so like information is out there, just learn and then like master it for starters. One, uh, two, find what resonates with you, find your style and like embrace it fully. When I first started out, I like tried to be like a little bit of everything. And I tried to follow like the rules, the rules that like this person said, like you must do this type of lighting and in reality, like once I learned what I liked to do and what my style was, I feel like that's when my work just like exploded to another level. It was just and like people will say like, I can tell that your photo looks like yours. So like find your style and just embrace it fully, but like mostly find what works for you. Some people are like very introverted photographers and they don't like to be up close and personal. And then I'm a very extroverted photographer. I want to be up close and personal. I use a 35 millimeter lens and I'm like, right next to my clients like guiding them through it so find your style and become wonderful at it and who inspires you oh my goodness that's a great question <laughs> um I don't know that I have one specific person but honestly I just find inspiration from all the other people that are out there on social media. Like when I see like these other photographers like killing it and doing these incredible photos, I find it really inspiring. And I'm like, I want to do that. I like, and so I guess anybody who's just killing it. And now, now that you asked that, I'm like, who is my like one source of inspiration? I don't know. Anyone who's just pushing forward and constantly like doing better and constantly uh, doing amazing things and not giving up. <laughs> And what's the biggest challenge that you've had to overcome? COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely did not see this coming. Um, last year was such an amazing year. I made like my best year of work. I made my best year of income. And so I was like full force, like ready for this year to be like my next best. <laughs> and then like all my weddings got canceled. <laughs> um, so I, I honestly, I genuinely think that this was probably um, the hardest so far. However, it's it's interesting because like I've just chose to like take it as like uh, turn it into a positive if I have to, um, instead of like dwelling in like how sucky it's been. <laughs> um, I've just kind of been like maybe this was the time to like 
really sit down and be patient and focus on what what I want to do next with my career and not always be in this mindset of like, go, go, go. Um, and it's allowed me to like do my art and start selling that. But yeah, probably COVID. <laughs> and what's helped you through this time? Painting. <laughs> it's like my self-therapy. Painting, honestly, I, I like paint every single day and it just like keeps me calm. Um, other creatives have been really nice too. Um, I've just like being able to reach out to other photographers and vice versa and just be like, hey, how are you handling this situation? Um, you know, what would you do about this? So like just having like a network has been really helpful and then just being able to still create. Um, Cause even though I couldn't do photography, I was still able to like express myself in a creative way because that's how I am. <laughs> what, what do you paint? Um, everything, not really, I'll show you some. So I love to paint, I love to paint like wild flowers. I love to paint mountains. So very like colorful things. Um, I use a lot of color. I use a lot of texture and a lot of layers. Um, so I love to paint landscapes, but like I never, and then that's like my women are badass one. <laughs> um, I love to paint landscapes, I, but like everything I do doesn't look exactly how it would in the real world. I love to make things like more quirky. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I love to paint nature. I, love, I mean, I, I would say like flowers and mountains are probably my favorite, but. <laughs> oh, and elephants. I love to paint elephants. <laughs> Is that something that comes naturally to you? Yeah, so <laughs> I don't really know. It, like I've never had any training in painting or any like art classes. I just like my senior year of high school, they were like, hey, you're not going to graduate unless you take an art credit. And I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> so I like, I like took an art credit and it was just kind of like a laid back class. And like our teacher would be like, oh, do this today. But I had never painted before. So I like painted and I was like, oh, I like this. Um, and the more I did it, I was just like, oh, I like this and I'm kind of good at it. And so I just over practice, I got better. But yeah, there was never like, I never like even knew I had it in me until that year of high school. <laughs> so just, I think it's just the artsy brain. That's all. How have you been shifting your business right now? Um, so I think that, like I was saying, um, having COVID happen, it's like made me like sit down and really analyze things. So I think what I want to do is I want to keep growing this art side of my business with the prints. And then I'd like to get to a point where I'm just, I've, I've always kind of been really selective with my weddings. Like I, I love to work with people that are um, really kind and laid back. Like I always joke that like, I've never had a bridezilla and it's because I don't want a bridezilla. <laughs> like I just genuinely like my brides and my, my grooms are the sweetest people on the earth. And it's because like, I just do, I try not to attract people that, aren't that way. So, so COVID has made me like hone in even more what I want. And I think going forward, I want to shift to like more adventurous type of weddings. Um, not just your traditional, like um, we get married this way in this church um, because that's what everyone else is doing. I want things that are like someone's backyard. I want something that's like on the ocean, something in the mountains. I just want to be able to like do even more creative work and even more adventurous type of work. Um, so yeah, COVID's kind of made me like sit down and be like, well, what do I want? Because like now I'm not photographing. So it's just making me think all the time. So I think I'm shifting towards just an even more selective type of clientele. Do you travel too, or is it just in the state of Ohio? Oh no, I'll go anywhere. You're going anywhere? <laughs> I will go anywhere. I'm, I'm such, I love to adventure. Um, I love to literally, I love new places. Like it's weird. Cause like some people are like, I hate change and I hate new. I love it. I want new and I want change. So yeah, I'll go anywhere to photograph someone. Have you done any like destination weddings? No, I mean, I've done like, I've done like pretty small scale stuff, but I haven't done anything that's like super epic and destinational. And that's like one, that was like one of my goals for this year. And then COVID happened and I was like, come on. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of like, that's kind of the path I'm like turning towards is to just get stuff that's like, I've never done it before. Um, I almost had a Scotland wedding booked and then COVID ruined it. And I was like, oh, my heart. 
Mm. And do you do like a consultation before you book? How do you like get to know that this is like a good client for me versus this That's is not such so a good? good. Question. <laughs> um, so for starters, like one of the things I've learned is if like I really, really market myself a certain way, I'm going to attract those type of people in the first place. So I really want people to get to know me before even reaching out to me. Um, so I really try and do that through like social media marketing and then through all of my like content and all my copy when they do reach out. So I use HoneyBook and people will submit in like an inquiry form. And through that, like I can send a brochure and through this brochure, I say like, I'm all about passionate, adventurous love. Like, and I just really like try and portray this is what I want. Um, and then we'll talk back and forth and sometimes we'll get coffee. Sometimes we'll meet up. Um, but obviously because of this as well, uh, COVID it's mostly been like, Hey, let's do like a FaceTime call. Um, but really in, in the first place, I think I pretty much attract that by through like my marketing and branding. Um, but I also do like to do a Facebook or a FaceTime call or something just to like get to know somebody even further. I've had a couple people book me without it. Um, but you can just kind of tell. Yeah. Definitely. And what's something you're obsessed with right now? It could be anything. Painting. <laughs> <laughs> I really have been obsessed. It's, I, I think it's like a, it's like it's kept me like mentally stable during this thing. Um, also obsessed with, oh God, I've totally jumped on the TikTok train. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's so bad because like the algorithm, like literally like feeds you what you want to see and so like I see all these like painting videos and I see all these like nature videos of people like going to mountains and I'm kind of obsessed with TikTok. Uh. Are you posting videos on TikTok? No I'm not <laughs> posting I need to be. I, every time I go to do it I get so like overwhelmed I'm like there's so many options and I feel like I don't know it well enough so I think I need to quit being a perfectionist and just do it like and just post a stupid video. I posted like three and I think they got four likes. <laughs> yeah yeah I see so many photographers on there again. yeah there's a lot of photographers on there and like and they just do these simple videos and I'm like well I could do that and then I don't do it so yeah I need to get my butt in gear <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely I've definitely been obsessed with TikTok as well Let's see here. Oh, what's something most people don't know about you hmm Something most people don't know. It could be like anything. Yeah. I have three adopted siblings. <laughs> One of them is deaf. So that's kind of, I think most people don't know, but I don't really like talk about it much because people are weird about it. They're like, oh, so you, that's not your real siblings. I'm like, no, they're my real siblings. <laughs> and do you do you sign language? Yeah, but I'm not fluent. Um, I never took classes or anything. So like I learned as a kid and then I basically just learned like how to speak to my brother. So like if it's something that he and I wouldn't talk about, I have to literally be like, how do you say? And then I have to like finger spell it and then he'll tell me how to say the word. Um, but if it's not something I would do all the time, then I just like, it doesn't really stick in my brain. So I wish I was more fluent, but it's one of those practice things. But yeah, I know how to, I know how to do like the basics or I know how to do um, conversation with him. And what have your 20s been like so far? Chaos. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I honestly love, I love my 20s. I mean, of course, like you have rough years and things aren't always easy, but I've always made it such a goal to follow what, what brings me most happiness in life and to follow a very free life. Um, so that's why at such a young age, I was like, I can't do this nine to five corporate life. Like I need to go do my own thing. Um, so I opened the business really young and I've just always had freedom. I, I love the fact that I'm my own boss and I can go on a road trip tomorrow if I want to. I can wake up tomorrow and do photography or I can wake up tomorrow and do paints or I can wake up tomorrow and work on my website. Um, so 20s have been pretty great. I can't really complain. I mean, like I said, there's hard times for everybody, but Overall, I feel like very happy with my decisions in life. <laughs> and what advice would you give your 20 year old self? Quit being what other people want you to be and just be what you want and embrace it and 
go all in on it. I spent so much time trying to be less of what I am. And I spent so much time trying to be a better fit for other friends or other people I was with and just be what you want and follow things and don't, don't apologize, be unapologetic about it. <laughs> and is there any questions that you wish I would have asked you? I'm sorry, that one cut out. What did you say? Yeah. Are there any questions that you wish I would have asked you? <laughs> it keeps cutting out as soon as you ask it. <laughs> <laughs> I try one more time. Okay. Are there any questions that you wish I would have asked you? Mm. Oh, oh, okay. Thank <laughs> you. Sorry. It kept cutting out like okay. as soon as you you as soon as you would say the actual question, it would just go away. That's okay. Um Oh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of like a really good question that like would be beneficial to people. I don't know. I feel like you covered like all the bases, <laughs> all the good ones. Okay. Awesome. And where can people connect with you? So um, Instagram is Aristasia Photography. I know my name is impossible to spell. Um, so if you just type in A-R-A-S-T-A-S-I-A -A -A photography, I'll come up. Also, if you even just get like the first like five letters you might I might come up as recommended <laughs> um so a-r-a-s-t-a-s-i-a -A -A. um it's like Anastasia just replaced the r or the n with an r <laughs> so that's where um my Instagram is and then Facebook is the same thing awesome well thank you so much for doing this yes thank you for having me yeah I love your photos they're so beautiful yeah I was looking through your thank Instagram you. and I was like oh my gosh <laughs> thank you <laughs> So <laughs> I bet I, I can create some really cool photos in uh, California. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed listening to this interview, I do have my podcast linked down below. I have tons of other episodes that you can tune into. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.